It's Don here from the board. Thanks for coming along and checking out another one of our videos. This week's video is going to be looking at power consumption on keyboards. One of our fans had messaged me and asked me if I could help him out by checking how much power my keyboards actually drew because he was interested in regards to the impact of LEDs. I actually didn't have any way of doing this so I had a quick chat with him and then I went online went to eBay and I found a really cheap power check device, power drawing device, I don't know really what you want to call it, it's just a meter uh, for USBs and it's something that you plug in and it can tell you um, how much power and whatnot that your actual device is using. Now this was a really cheap device, I got it uh, on eBay and it was $11, uh, looks like that, just under the, the main camera there. So you plug it in one end and then uh, you plug your USB devices on the other end and it can tell you how much it draws. I had played around with this with my keyboards that I have at home and for the most part it wasn't really showing terribly much at all. And that didn't surprise me because none of my keyboards at home are backlit keyboards. The only way that I could really go forward with his question was to actually use my work keyboard which is a ducky um, legend that actually has backlit but because it's my work keyboard I had to bring it home from work so and that's what's actually happening here is that's my work keyboard I've logged it home all of it uh, 1.3 kilos in its glory to be able to do this video for you so tomorrow this is uh, heading back to work with me now you're seeing that I've taken some keycaps off it because they're actually larger artisans that I have mounted on at work and they tend to come off really easily if I put them in the bag so I've just pulled them off to take it home and, and that's just how it is. Now I didn't really have terribly much knowledge or expectation on how much power is actually drawn as part of LEDs on keyboards so I was actually, I wouldn't really say surprised but it was nice that I did see some numbers come up on this device which I'm going to go through with you. Uh, but I did, of course, check that before I went to do this video simply because, well, you know, you got to make sure that something works conceptually before you actually try and show what's actually going on here to understand it. So I'm just going to plug this in. Now I'm actually sitting in the dark because the, the display on this is actually quite bright and with the reflection of the room light above, it makes it really hard to see the display. So I do apologize for the fact that the, the work surface down here is actually not very well illuminated. So if I jack that in there, I'm just using my uh, my stand here to, to clamp it. You can see the actual numbers there. They're a bit fuzzy because the camera doesn't really want to focus on it very well. Um, see, it'll take it into focus now, but then when you pull it away, it loses focus because it wants to focus on the table. So let's plug in my, uh, my ducky and you'll see that the first thing that happens is it jumps from being a 5.0 something volt and it drops just a fraction down to 499 quite consistently. Uh, obviously the power draw for this device itself is some but running the actual chipset on this keyboard is already pulling a little bit of voltage but the apps hasn't changed. The apps has not gone anywhere. Now I'm just going to try and turn that a little bit maybe so it's a little bit, there we go. Um, so first and foremost, I'm just going to open up a notepad, which you're not going to be able to see here, but uh, I'm going to be able to bash on it for a little bit, and there is no backlighting on. So uh, if I just do random key bashing here, you'll see I'm spiking a very small amount of ampage. If I go really hard, or if I just spam down fingers entirely, it's practically nothing. Nothing's really happening. I had a manage I managed a little bit of a spike just before at around oh okay I've got the wrong mode on that would explain something I'm um, just gonna switch modes okay there we go um, I got a little bit of a spike there but that's actually because I had the fader mode on without realizing it because uh, the notepad is blocking what I'm seeing on the screen fully but you'll notice not much is happening at all this is true of all the other keyboards that I've had at home that I tried with this device up to now. And that's why the backlit is actually so interesting. So, as you can see, uh, there is backlit modes on this and that is at full brightness. Full brightness is pulling 250 milliamps straight off the bat. 
and that's just with white LEDs. There's nothing special about these. Um, there's no RGB or fancy patterns. And you can see over here on this, this particular indicator, on the right hand side of the amp line, it tells you the cumulative milliamp hours that you're actually powering through. So straight away, we're already at two milliamp hours. Uh, I'm not quite sure, you know, how long people leave their keyboards on with full LEDs, because it is quite bright, but you can see it's ticking up quite, quite quickly. So your power consumption is actually quite significant. Now we know that for most part, I think uh, USB ports can support like what, 500 milliamps or one amp or something like that, depending on what it is. And I think the USB hub on a HHKV is uh, like 500 milliamps. So if you've got something that's very power hungry and it's pulling it through a keyboard that's got a hub with LEDs on it, you're already losing half of that capacity purely to the LEDs. Now you see within one minute, we've already pulled five milliamp hours. Now if I change this intensity, you can see it drops quite drastically. So this is the lowest intensity and it's reading less than 10 milliamps. And as I slowly increase the intensity, we're hitting just 10 milliamp there, three, five, 12 milliamps, 10, 12 milliamps, up again, and then we're at 25, 23, 25 milliamps, which is the maximum that the brightness of this is drawing. Now, if we change modes, so now this is breathing mode, you can see that it's actually pulsing in time with that. So it's going all the way down to zero, and then it's coming all the way back up to 25, uh, 250 milliamps, and then all the way back down again. If we change to um, our residual mode, I'm just doing here on the numpad so I can actually see what's happening. There is there is not a lot that's actually, even if I, there we go, if I fully mash it, if I mash a whole bunch of keys simultaneously so that they're all lighting up, that's kind of uh, where we're gonna see about 10 milliamps happening through there, okay? And if I change it to the reactive mode and I start spamming on the reactive mode, we're getting around seven, eight, 12. So obviously the more keys that I'm activating with this, uh, the more power it's gonna be drawing. So there you go. It is actually quite a significant amount of power if you think about it. If you have a full blown rig and you know, you've got your LEDs on bright and you've got it on for several hours a day, you're sucking up a lot of power. Uh, and obviously energy bills, at least in Australia, are quite expensive and they're going up and up and up so knowing that if you want to save a bit of money on your power bills maybe you should tone down or turn off your leds completely as fancy and nice as that is to have now of course for those who are interested in regards to what the top rate keyboards are like and what they pull um, i can do that very quickly and we'll have a check of that as well so let's just take my ducky keyboard away put that behind me Let's pull out uh, my Leopold. There it is. Let's get out the cable for it. Losing the Velcro a bit for it. So, that's the cable and then into the actual keyboard itself. There we go. All right, now just making sure I'm still good in there. Yep. So if I turn on the caps lock over here, that's got an LED. The insert's not turning on, but uh, I think that's because it doesn't register unless if it's in something that actually uses the insert, like Word or something like that. But with that caps lock LED, you can see it's actually fluctuating a little bit between less than 10 to one uh, to 10 milliamps, sorry. So it's definitely pulling some amount of power to power that one LED. If I turn that off and then I start uh, type spamming, you can see that the numbers aren't really changing or going anywhere. So in that essence, top rate, even though it's a hybrid capacitance and it probably uses a bit more in terms of uh, electrical power for detecting, it's not significant, at least to that significant figure level. So 
rest satisfied to know that if you are using a top right keyboard, your choice is not costing you more electrically as long as you don't have backlit. Now, if you have a backlit keyboard, then obviously that will make a difference. Now, the only thing that I can't test is because I don't have any RGB products here is what the effect of RGB LEDs are. Now, in general, because LEDs use different frequencies and wavelengths, but they use the same voltage, I don't know if they use the same amount of current. Uh, it's something I guess someone else will have to test out or unless if someone has an RGB board that they want to lend me, send me or whatever for me to actually plug into this device. But it would not actually surprise me if there was a difference. Whether the difference is actually notable on a very simple cheap device like this is an entirely different matter. So there you go. Um, in conclusion, you're going to be eating about 250 milliamps uh, when you've got full brightness LEDs on a 100 size keyboard full-size keyboard. If you're using a smaller form factor, obviously you've got less LEDs that you're powering, which means it's also going to consume less power. Um, and that's pretty much it. So thanks very much for checking out the video. Of course, if you like our stuff, please hit subscribe and like to the video. Really appreciate it because then it just shows your uh, appreciation and support for our content. So if you have any other ideas of what you want me to check out, to try, to see, to talk about, to demonstrate, that kind of thing, and it's within my capacity, be more than happy to. And uh, yeah, shout out to Wallop for this great video idea. So, as usual, until next time, happy clacking.